Chapter 21. Homeward Bound. The good weather held for their entire traverse of Lake Superior. Let's push, men, Charbonneau or La Petite urged each morning as they noted the clarity of the sky. Remember the near disaster on Michipicotin Bay? Pierre understood their anxiety on the big lake. Charbonneau reminded them of their good fortune each day, saying, You must say the right prayers, fellows. Pierre's muscles adjusted quickly to the familiar work of paddling. He enjoyed the portage free travel and pulled from pipe stop to pipe stop like a veteran. When time allowed in the evening, Pierre read La Vrandre's book. The distances the famous explorer, explorer traveled is astonishing. Dozens of French trading posts made Pierre's journey seem small by comparison. Charbonneau talked more than usual, admiring their progress often and saying, the lake is a holiday, no? Or we forget how to portage, maybe with so many days of easy work, eh? Pierre agreed with a nod or smile, holding to the steady motion that drew them even closer to home. The brigade passed through Sault St. Marie in a festive mood. Each clear, bright day, the chansons of the canoemen echoed up the rocky shore of Huron. It wasn't until the brigade neared the French River that a gloomy silence descended. Long before they reached the river mouth, the canoemen saw the lawn's red marker high up on the hill. They shipped their oars for a moment and floated across the still water. Doffing their caps and bowing their heads, the men crossed themselves and offered silent prayers. Pierre remembered the broken blade La Petite had retrieved that afternoon. As he recalled the searching faces and the darkening waters, the old emptiness rose up inside of him. No matter how hard or how often he thought of that day, there was no way he could make sense out of it. Halfway up the French River, the brigade took a pipe stop. Pierre sat at the base of a tall pine and drew out the knife Lalande had given him. <clears throat> he was whist whittling a stick when Charbonneau sat down next to him, saying, I'll bet it has beautiful balance. Charbonneau hefted the knife by its bone handle and nodded, just like every one he ever made. He handed it back to Pierre and leaned against the pine trunk, taking a deer pull on his pipe, a deep pull on his pipe. I know it's hard, he continued. Every single one of us misses him. But it's a part of what we accept on the trail. It can happen to anyone, me and you included, at any minute. Pierre nodded, grateful to the steersman for offering comfort. Then Charbonneau asked, Did your father ever tell you the tale of the lost child? Pierre shook his head. It's an old Indian legend. Everyone who's paddled the French has heard it. According to the story, an Ojibwe family was camped right here in this grove. A boy who was playing by the river slipped off that ledge. Charbonneau pointed towards the river as he spoke, and he vanished without a sound. The family searched the bank and paddled down river, calling his name, but there was no sign of him. Pierre looked from Charbonneau to the river. Then, just when they were ready to give up, they heard the boy's voice coming from under the ground. They dug as fast as they could, scraping a hole with a hatchet blade. For a while, the crying was so loud it seemed as if they could reach down and touch the boy's voice, or hand. They kept digging, but the voice drifted off. It moved away from the river, staying deep underground. When they finally gave up, the cries were coming from beneath that cliff back there, and the voice was growing fainter by the moment. Charbonneau stared at the river for a long time after the story was done. Pierre finally broke the silence, asking, Do you believe that could really happen? With his eyes still fixed on the river, Charbonneau replied slowly, You mean, is it true? Pierre nodded. All I can say for sure is that I heard the story told by lots and lots of fellows. That gives it a sort of truth, I guess. The more I learn about these rivers, the more I realize there's hundreds of things we'll never understand. There's too many moods, too many feelings that shift with the seasons. All we can ever know for sure is the changes. At that moment, La Petite interrupted, asking, Time to voyage? Charbonneau rose and tapped his pipe against the tree trunk. The French River was in a quiet, low-water mood, totally unlike the bright roaring that had washed the lawn and the lost child of the legend to their graves. After they started paddling again, Pierre thought about the wild river, and he listened for that little Ojibwe boy's cry.